Hey folks, you know, I wanted a Bamboo Lab P1S for a really long time, but I was afraid it wouldn't live up to the hype. Well, I can tell you that it does. Today, I'm going to share a few blunders that I made and a few tips to help you avoid some of the mistakes that I made. Okay, so my very first blunder that I did right from the get-go, it's one wrong setting in Bamboo Studio that had the print head crashing where it blew this cover off completely unplugged and ended up creating a scratch and a little bit of damage to the inside of the door and i'll show you what that setting is if you stick around until the end i'll share with you my biggest mistake that was a real game changer for me so here i was scrolling through maker world looking at all the cool designs i was really excited and of course you go down the rabbit hole you want to try all these different designs so i grabbed one design i downloaded it i wasn't using wi-fi yet so I had loaded the design onto an SD card and I did not notice that the printer was not set to a P1S. It was set to an A1 Mini. So the coordinates were all wrong, perhaps the acceleration and the speed, but it ended up crashing and slamming into the wall. And Blunder number one is just a bad habit or sheer laziness where you end up getting sloppy and you end up leaving your reels of filament all exposed sitting around and I don't remember the last time I used that reel or this one or this one or this one or this one so filament is not all created equal and over time I have found that the silk material will absorb moisture and the moisture tends to go towards the core of the reel. So you can start a print with the outside portion where it may start off fine, but as your print develops, it'll end up failing because of the moisture that is in the filament. Good practice is when you get a brand new reel of filament, you inspect it to see that the vacuum packing is intact. Okay, I can see that. I can't move the material. It's really tight on the reel. And you'll notice that there is a desiccant inside. So the very first thing you do when you get your reel, you're going to open that reel and you're going to take it and you're going to put it in a large freezer baggie and add that desiccant into the bag at the same time. You're going to want to have a few of these humidity detectors around. You don't need a lot. If you have five, that'll be fine. But what you do is you put everything into the bag and leave it there for an hour or so and monitor have a look at what this is saying related to the humidity that is in that reel of filament if you get down to 15 even 10 percent it's fine you're you're in good shape that reel will be ready to go i'm in the process of drying out all my filament that i've left laying around and i will be putting them into those freezer baggies and i'll be putting them into a desiccant my new favorite way of drying filament is using this modified food dehydrator and i even put the rechargeable desiccant packs in there with the reels when i'm drying out the reel and it works out fantastic i follow the process afterwards i put it in the bag i put the desiccant into the bag i put the humidity sensor into the bag with it i leave it for an hour i come back and i look and i ensure that it is well dried there's links to everything that i've mentioned in the description below related to rechargeable desiccants freezer bags and the food dehydrator that's blunder number two okay blunder number three is using cardboard reels or rims in the ams and i know there's going to be people who are going to i'm going to get kicked back over this because they're going to say i use cardboard reels in my ams and it works well good for you that's great but the thing is is that they do fail and do you want to take the risk of being into 12 hours into a 16 hour print and have it fail because the cardboard reel jammed the filament I know the Bamboo Lab system can catch jams and pause the print so that you can recover. But why take the risk? I've had it where the cardboard reel has failed from the get-go, partway through, even adding the rim failed. Not all cardboard reels are created the same width as the Bamboo Lab reels. And those Bamboo Lab reels, they work you can buy refills not just from bamboo labs there's other companies that you can buy it from so i'm saying why take the risk i've fallen for it more than once where i think oh i've got the cardboard reels conquered and then it jams and and i lose my print so 
From now on, I will never use a cardboard reel, nor will I use these rims ever again. I will transfer onto the Bamboo Lab reels because those work. That's blunder number three. Okay, this isn't a blunder. This is just a tip that I'm going to share. And this is for newbies. And that is, with these build plates, make sure to wash it with soapy water. After you've washed it with soapy water, dry it and then put it into the printer and wipe it with iso alcohol. This will ensure that your prints will stick well to the bed and you won't end up losing prints. Um, when you're using PLA, PLA doesn't really tend to uh, stick fiercely after the plate is cooled down. That's nice and easy. But if you're using PLAF or PLA Plus or some of those other filaments, I've found that they tend to really stick to the bed. They're difficult to get off. So if you have to scrape it, use a plastic scraper. Don't use any metal. Don't be scratching up your, your uh, build plate. The other thing is, Use the controller to warm up the plate a little bit when it's time to peel off the bottom. And especially when it comes to supports, you know, if you have to peel off the supports, just warm it up a little bit. Now, I'll go five or six prints where I just wipe it down with alcohol in between, especially if it's only PLA. But if it's other materials, that's when I will take it off and I'll go give it a good scrub with dish soap in the sink and then put it back in and wipe it with alcohol. So that's not a blender, but that's a tip. And that's number four. So my biggest mistake was not buying this printer sooner. I had wanted one for a long time, and I was really concerned about spending that much money to buy a printer that might end up creating some of the crap that bed slingers create. But I can tell you that the hype is real this thing prints amazing i ended up getting jobs with about six or seven people that paid for the first printer and enough for me to go ahead and buy a second one just from talking to people and sharing with them and showing them what these printers are capable of ended up generating revenue that i wasn't looking for at the time the plan was to open a little shop and to sell some prints and stuff but i ended up doing some really big jobs and the beautiful thing about it was that these printers were working while i was sleeping and while i was at work anyways i have lots more material to come but in the meantime Watch this video next.